Shalom Israel and welcome to another edition of Yashara's 20 minute breakdown where I'll attempt to break down the scriptures within 20 minutes but first and foremost as always you know how we do we give all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Raka, Kadash and the Akims and the Elders in the highways and byways pushing this word in truth and sincerity all praises and the elder women teaching the younger women all praises to you too and the camps and the solo brothers going out there and making videos, edifying the body, pushing it out in social media and all outlets possible, pushing the truth according to scriptures, all praises. Now, what I am going to touch on today is um, a verse where the Christians don't like, I bet, I'll, I'll put it like that. The Christians don't like this verse because in the Christian church, you'll find everything is sweet, everything is love, everything is hunky-dory. That's what they teach. They come out of the Bible and they say, Every God is love and everything is hunky-dory. There's nothing bad. Everything is posterity. Everything is good. But the Bible doesn't teach everything is good. The Bible has a sweet side and a bitter side. And that's where I'm going today. Show you the sweet and the bitter. Yeah? So, any if you go any um, so-called religious institute and all they can tell you is posterity and everything's good and everything's rosy, just pray and you'll receive it. Believe you receive it in the name of Jesus. And, and, and they get on all this way and, you know, you know, they hype up the crowd and everybody's hallelujah, brother, amen. And, you know, I mean, you know, it, it keeps bums on the seats in their establishment because when you look at their establishment, it's packed. So, you know, that, that doctrine keeps bums on seats coming back every Sunday, and that's not the day of worship, it's the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, but nevertheless, people keep coming back every Sunday for more of that kind of preaching, because it's beautiful, it, you know, it, it's warm, and it's, it, it's showing you, once you believe in Jesus, uh, as they would say, it's all going to be good, you know, it's all good at the end of the day, it's all good, but the Bible doesn't teach that, I mean, you have to believe, yes, but you have to do the works to show that you believe. It's not just sitting back on a chair and say, I believe, I believe, I call upon the name. Because in that name you're supposed to be calling upon, in that name there is righteousness, meaning there are laws, statutes and commandments that you must do. There are things you must do in that name. Like, a name isn't just a name. A name is also reputation. What that name stands for. Holy, set apart, obedient. That's what that name represents. Everything, let's say, godly. That's what that name represents. And that comes with faith and works. Faith, believing that your works, you know, it will be sufficient with your belief because you've got to do the works believing that the works you're doing and the, the mercy that comes from the Most High, you know, that is sufficient, you know, to, to bring us to the next step. That's that grace and mercy that comes with the works, which is the laws, statutes and commandments, being obedient to the Most High. Those are the works you must do. Do you think Abraham got his title just by saying, yeah, I believe and not doing what he was ordered to do? He had to do according to what he was told. And in believing what he was told, this will happen. That's how he acted. And it went well for him. And for some of our other forefathers, them believing that what they're doing is according to what the Most High requires of them through the Messiah, and believing that, you know, there is mercy, there is grace, whereas certain sins where they fell short, they would no longer be put to death, whereas under the law of Moses, before the Messiah came, when you fell short, certain sins, there was no two ways about it, you couldn't bargain with anybody, you were stoned, but now under the Messiah, now you can repent. You're no longer put to death. You can acknowledge where you've gone wrong and, and fix where you've gone wrong. It's that simple. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into the book of Revelations. I'm going to take it at Revelations chapter 10, and I'm going to start it at verse 9. That's where I'm going to go. Revelations chapter 10, verse 9. I want to show you the sweet, but then there is a bitter side to that sweet, which is the side Christians don't talk about because everything's all hunky-dory in their world. But in the real world, it's not like that. So, enough said. I've got my timer, and we're going to start in three, two, one. Boom, we're away. Now, let's go straight there. The book of Revelations, chapter 10 and verse 9, and it reads, this is John the Revelator, yeah? And it reads, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be, it shall be, in thy mouth sweet as honey so this is john the revelator like there was an angel with a book the angel standing when you read above the angel standing you know between the sea and and the earth upon the sea and the earth and he's got the book so you know he's take tell um john the revelator has been told to take this little book eat it and it'll be bitter in his belly but it'll be sweet in his mouth now let's go down to verse 10 watch this revelation chapter Revelation chapter 10 and verse 10, and it reads, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Verse 11, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. Now that tongues is not that talking in tongues, what you see them doing in the Christian church with that, that's not the tongues. Tongues is different languages. That's what that tongues is talking about. So when you're talking in tongues, you're talking in different languages. Languages that people will understand who understands that language. That's what tongues, talking in the tongues is. Yeah? Now, so that's what John was told to do. Now, here's the point. So he took the book and he ate it and it was sweet in his mouth. But then when it, when it got into his belly and he digested it, it was bitter. Why was that? It's the, this is it. This is, it's, it's, it's um, prophetic, is the, uh, if I'm saying it right. This is the thing. This Bible, when you hear the words, they are sweet and it sounds great. But you see, when you digest the word and realize what's required and realize what's coming, it's very bitter. That's what that's showing you. Let me give you the, let me let me show you this, right? Just like this, yeah. We're gonna jump to we're gonna jump to the book of bum, bum, bum. let's jump to the book of Matthew. Watch this, yeah. Um, we're gonna jump book of no, not Matthew. We're gonna jump to the book of John. Listen to this, John chapter three verse sixteen, and it reads John chapter three verse sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's lovely. Oh, God loves everybody. So who, once you believe in God, you know, once you believe in the son, you know, you'll have everlasting life. You, you know, salvation. These are the sweet of the, of the scriptures, yeah? Another one, watch this. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. There's another one. We no longer have to keep the law, brother. We're not under the law. We're under grace. So we don't have to do that. And we're under grace, brother. Sounds all sweet. Watch this. Here's another one. Watch this. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. And it reads, That if thou confess with thy mouth, Yahawashai, which he said, Lord Jesus, but I'm using his correct Hebrew name. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, you know, Lord Yahawashai, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there you go. There's another sweet verse. All you've got to do is, you know, confess that Yahweh Shai, you know, 
came in the flesh and you know you shall be and and you know the most high raised Yahusha from the dead thou shall be saved all these verses sound sweet here's another one Joel chapter 2 and verse 13 and it reads and rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto Yahweh your your power for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repent of him of the evil they don't read all that they just say rend your heart and not your garment and the and they teach as in you know it doesn't matter what you wear it matters what's in your heart that's how they teach that verse it sounds all great rend your heart and not your garment doesn't matter what i wear god sees the heart not my garment what i'm wearing these are verses that sound great here's another one matthew chapter 10 verse 38 and it reads and he and and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me now there's another one take up your cross and follow and people go and get a literal cross i've seen people in the streets with a literal cross walking around saying they're preaching the messiah and a lot of people wears a crucifix on a chain around their neck saying they're professing the messiah these things you know people do here's another one galatians chapter 3 verse 8 and it reads and the scripture foreseeing that god would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed so there's another one. Oh yeah yeah we are abraham's seed so remember in in abraham all nations are blessed these are verses that are sweet in the mouth but now when you now go and search them out now you realize there's it's bitter because remember you know they say oh god is love god is love Christ is love, but listen to what the Messiah said out his own mouth. Now, here's the bitter side. Now, watch this. This is Luke chapter 12, verse 51, and it reads, Luke chapter 12, verse 51, and it reads, Suppose ye, this is the Messiah's own words, and it reads, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Verse 52, for for from henceforth shall from for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided three against two and two against three showing you that the most high the messiah is bringing division yeah division that's not unity because when the real word comes out who are you going to believe which side are you going to be on you see so he marks that line in the sand that's the division because now when those who are keeping the commandments and doing according to scripture now we're going to be battling with those who are still in christianity and believing everything is all good and those people in christianity is looking at the, the real people that's keeping the commandments and keeping doing exactly what the messiah said to do they're looking at them as a cult that's the division he's come with. Now, let's go back now. Remember John 3.16, for God to love the world. Now, it sounds all great. But when you read Hebrews 1 and verse 2, listen to this. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2, and it reads, Has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now notice how this verse says worlds with an S, plural, showing you that there is more than one world. So now you have to search what John 3.16 means. Watch this. This is where the Messiah was quoting from when he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because you've got to remember, there was no such thing as a New Testament. So the Messiah wasn't quoting John 3.16 when he said John 3.16. That's not what, because that wasn't written yet. He was quoting from here, Isaiah 45 verse 17, and it reads, But Israel, Israel meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, not that landmass Israel today. Talking about Jacob's sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who he's referring to. And it reads, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. That's the world he was talking about in John 3.16. That world without end. 
So now you see the sweet side, but now when you digest it and you seek and you search and you realize God so loved the world isn't talking about God loving everybody and everybody's going to get salvation in the world. Now you see, that's the bitter now that um that the um what do you call it that the revelator John now had to endure and he had to go what and prophesy that to nations kings and tongues you see this is how it goes and the next one that i read earlier romans chapter 6 verse romans chapter 6 verse 14 where it reads for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace and this is the verse they don't read in the christian church just the next verse down what then shall this is romans chapter 6 verse 15 what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace god forbid meaning no you shouldn't sin because remember what is sin first john chapter 3 verse 4 sin is the transgression of the law that's what sin is according to scripture and remember as i said before the new testament wasn't written then so where did john get that description of what sin is here it is he got it from the book of leviticus chapter 4 and verse 2 listen to this yeah uh bum, bum, bum. let me just find it oh leviticus i'll have to go here because i've just mixed up my page watch this leviticus chapter 4 and verse 2 and it reads this is where john the revelator got his definition of what sin is leviticus chapter 4 verse 2 and it reads speak unto the children of israel saying if a soul shall sin see through ignorance against any of the commandments of the lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them there we go that's where he got his definition of sin from so that's why when john in john chapter first john 3 4 when he says whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law that's where he got his definition from of sin now showing you these are these are all the the, the 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 sour that's coming from those verses that sound sweet now a next one that i read um um blah, 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 where is it i read yeah here's the next one the next one that i read was romans chapter 10 verse 9 where it says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and that the yahweh that that with thy mouth that Yahweh shall, you know, and shall be believe in thine heart that the Most High raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Just quickly, you know, giving you, giving you that one. Now, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, yeah, that believe that you, he should, you should be saved. Where did he get that from? Yeah, it was um Romans. That was Paul saying that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahweh shall and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And he said, with thy heart, man believeth unto righteousness, yeah? And with thy mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, listen to this. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. It reads, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Same as saved, shall be delivered. Listen to this. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So there's a remnant of Israel the Lord shall call. So that's only to Israel. So see, this is the bitter side now of things when you're going through the scriptures. Um, um, and, and watch this, yeah? Another one, a sweet one, where it says, listen to this, it says, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 19, and it reads, Honour thy, honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Now, where did he get that? Watch this. Well, honour thy mother and father, we know that comes from, um, what do you call it, um, Exodus chapter 20, if I remember correctly. Um... I'm sure it's yes it is um exodus chapter 20 um but watch this this is the point i really want the one where it says thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself watch this where you got that from leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 and it reads thou shalt not hate thine brother in thine heart thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him verse 18 
Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Hear that? The children of your people, not all people, your people. The children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Showing you that the brother and neighbor is the same, but they're the children of your people, not all people. So when you say, oh, you must love your neighbor as yourself, sounds sweet. But when you dissect it, you realize the Bible's teaching you, you're supposed to love the children of your people, not of all people. You see, these are these are the, 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 the sour that the church don't teach. Yeah. Watch this. Here's, an, here's another one. Oh, yes. Here's the one that I did read earlier as well. Where it says Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. It says, and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Now, what's this? People go around with a literal cross. But watch this. The next chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, that's how you follow him. You bring your sins and your burdens unto him. And obviously, he teach the law and the grace. So that grace in that law will give you rest because now you can repent and change from your, your wicked ways because the Messiah has showed you how to do it. So you come unto him, learn how to do it, and he will give you rest. The rest he'll give you is the rest from your sins because now you are keeping the law and you are no longer sinning. Because remember, you're only sinning if you're breaking God's laws. But once you are keeping the laws, you are no longer a sinner. That's how it works. Yeah. Now, another one where where Galatians chapter three, verse eight, where it said, um, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preaching before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, watch this. Yeah. This is, the, this is the verse they don't read. In order for all nations to be blessed, this is it. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. And this is this. And it reads, And I, this is, this is what the Most High God said to Abraham. And this covenant was gone from to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. And it reads, And I will bless them that bless thee. Here we go. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So that's the only way all families of the earth is blessed. If you bless the, the seed of Abraham. If you're not blessing the seed of Abraham, then you are cursed. If you're cursing them, you'll be cursed. Only if you're blessing them, you'll be blessed. But watch this. Maccabees, 1 Maccabees chapter 2 verse 10. Watch this. 1 Maccabees chapter 2 verse 10 and it reads, What nation has not had a part of her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? So the Bible is even showing you, all nations haven't blessed um, the, the children of Israel, Abraham's seed. They haven't blessed them. So they're not going to be blessed. They're going to be cursed. Because the scripture said, bless him that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. So you see, you can't expect a blessing if you've been cursing Abraham and his seed. Notice I say seed as in singular, not seeds as many, because it tells you that in the Galatians, because we know Abraham had many children. But the promises went to his seed, a singular, not plural, seed. And even the scripture says, not seed as of many. You know what? Um, I was going to read it, actually, but time is almost run. I can't believe it. I'm almost out of time. So, so, the, 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 so this is the thing, right? Um, let me quickly read you this, because this is the thing about the bitter and the sweet. This is Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20, and it reads, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So you see, you can't read a scripture and run with it and make your own private interpretation. You've got to seek out the book of the Lord and read, and you have to, you know, study to show yourself approved, and you have to like do precept upon precept, precept upon precept, 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 line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little to get the true understanding of scriptures. Now, there's where you get the sweet and the bitter, because now when you understand what the verses are really saying, it's a hard pill to swallow. It, it can be bitter. It can be bitter, but it is what it is. And the most high, the most high, he can do what he like. Who can stop him? 
So I hope you got something with that. I'm about to time out. I had many more scriptures I wanted to go through, but that's what it is. I've got quite a bit of bit out in, in that 10 in that 20 minutes. So keep the faith, believe in your shy, and do the works. Because remember, faith without works is dead. So don't just live by faith only, just like you can't live by works only. You've got to have both doing the laws and having faith in the only begotten son, Yahawashai, the one you call Christ. So I hope you got something with that. This is Yasharala. We out.